F-16s fighter jets provided to Ukraine will be based in underground bunkers and protected hangars in order to protect them from Russian strikes, Major Ilya Yevlash, a spokesperson for the Air Force of the Ukrainian Armed Forces has said. The military official said the advanced jets will be dispersed on different airfields and airstrips, and mock-ups will be used to mislead the enemy. Given our modest fleet of workboats, which for obvious reasons has shrunk in more than two years, such measures should have been introduced a long time ago. But, as they say, better late than never, Yevlash said. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said last week that F-16 aircraft will begin arriving in Ukraine this year, along with trained pilots and maintenance personnel. Addressing the Ramstein meeting, Austin said over the past two years, members of the Defense Contact Group have provided Ukraine with over 70 medium and long-range air defense systems, thousands of missiles, over 3,000 armored vehicles, including more than 800 main battle tanks. Ukraine is due to receive its first much-anticipated U.S.-made F-16s this summer and its pilots have been training on the jets for months. The planes are expected to strengthen Ukraine's air defense amid intensified Russian strikes. Ukraine has long been asking for F-16s since the early stages of Russia's full-fledged invasion of the country in February 2022. According to the Associate Press, Ukraine may use Western air bases when it gets F-16s because the jets require high-standard runways and protective hangars. Kremlin has warned Ukraine's Western allies against providing Kiev with F-16s, with Putin saying in March that Western air bases that host F-16s for Ukraine would be legitimate targets for his armed forces. Russian troops dug into Chernobyl's irradiated dirt, cooked food over radioactive campfires. At the start of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, the Kremlin's ignorance of radiation danger at Chernobyl stood out as a prime example of Moscow military bumbling. It still does, according to Kyiv Post media outlet. It is noted that Russian soldiers invading Ukraine in February 2022 ignored station worker warnings to avoid terrain contaminated by radiation from the Chernobyl nuclear power plant accident and hundreds of them lived for more than a month in trenches dug into ground saturated with potentially lethal isotopes, eyewitnesses and nuclear scientists said. Valery Semenov, security chief at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant from February the 23rd to April the 3rd, 2022, in an interview with the Kyiv Post, said Russian troops entering the premises showed little interest in research compiled over almost two decades on fallout and hotspot sites around the station. Chernobyl's reactor number four exploded, caught on fire, and dumped catastrophic volumes of radioactive dust into the land around it and into the atmosphere following an April the 26th, 1986 failed maximum power test. It was the worst nuclear power accident in history. Russian aircraft in the first hours of the Kremlin's February the 24th, 2022 invasion of Ukraine ignored long-standing no-fly rules into airspace above the plant and Russian armored columns used roads cutting straight across a 2,500 km square exclusion zone rigged with barbed wire fences and radiation warning signs. A road inside the Chernobyl exclusive zone is marked by radiation warning signs and a notice that the visitor is entering the Red Forest, some of the most irradiated terrain in the world. Transit is possible inside vehicles or wearing protective gear, but station scientists warn that a person present in the area, even for an hour, risks potentially lethal radiation exposure. According to station personnel, between 300 and 600 Russian troops dug in and lived in the area for about a month in March 2022. Subsequently, Russian aircraft began flying, passing just 30 meters above the station. They traversed over the power unit, including the reactor that was destroyed in 1986, Semenov said. Despite nuclear power plants being deemed closed zones under the international law, with overflights of any aircraft prohibited, they disregarded these regulations. Ukrainian plant workers said 200 to 300 Russians with weapons and combat vehicles were stationed inside the station premises, where they constructed fighting positions and dugouts. Images published by the Ukrainian state-run news agency Ukrinform showed trenches dug to the height of a man and two-meter-tall HESCO-type military barriers filled with Chernobyl sand lacing open ground around station buildings. 
A technician stated, the dirt the Russians excavated is irradiated four or five times above safe levels. Ukraine's Minister of Energy, German Galushchenko, speaking to reporters following Russia's early April retreat from northern Ukraine, including the Chernobyl station, said that Russian soldiers who dug into the Red Forest not only exposed themselves to radiation, but helped irradiate their comrades by filling sandbags with dirt excavated in the area for the construction of defensive positions around the station itself and defensive reinforcement of power station offices occupied by Russian officers. Smaller personal items taken from lethally irradiated buildings sometimes were handed over to Russian officers as souvenirs who then spent weeks with items contaminated with deadly but invisible radiation, sometimes on their desks, he said.